deployer makes setting up a Docker Home Lab a breeze while also teaching you in the process. In this video, I'm going to showcase version 5, which is probably the biggest update ever. Deployer automates Home Lab setup. The concept is not new if you're familiar with my previous work on Atomic Toolkit, which did similar things. When I first released Deployer in September of 2023, it was called Auto Traffic and it had just two apps, Socket Proxy and Traffic. Today, Deployer can automate the setup of 75 apps, including Traffic, Othelia, Plex, Jellyfin, Sonar, Radar, and 75 other apps. Few months back, I released version 4 and also made a 10 minute intro video on it Check it out if you're interested. But a lot has changed since I introduced version 4, which had 40 apps, and now version 5 has 75 apps, and that is not even the biggest difference. In version 5, I'm introducing local-only setup and an advanced traffic configuration, which can restrict your apps for internal access only, or external access only, or both, while still using a proper SSL certificate and fully qualified domain name. Deployer can even build an automatic home lab dashboard for you on the fly. All of these with screenshots can be found on my website or Deployer GitHub, both of which are linked in the description below. To celebrate the one year anniversary of Deployer and the release of version 5, I have some exciting promotions, including some free license giveaways. I will share the details at the end of this video, so stick around for that. If Deployer does not work for you for any reason, just reach out to me on my Discord server. I will help you there or give you a refund if that's what you want. I will be publishing a detailed two hour guide on how to use it more efficiently. So if you decide to support or just are curious, then watch out for that video. Let's dive in. This is the main menu of Deployer. Right off the bat, you see a hint on some setup suggestions based on what you want to do. You can turn off this notification if you find it annoying after you've become familiar with Deployer. Deployer is organized in a very logical way, starting with prerequisites, then you set up your system, then set up Docker, then your reverse proxy, moving on to security and authentication. And once this framework is set up, you can start setting up your apps. Now, this was the only possible workflow until version 4. In version 5, I introduced some advanced feature which would allow you to skip some steps and take a different path. And finally, when everything looks great, you can use the tools menu to back up your setup or restore it if you mess something up while tinkering. Let's see what each of these menus offer. The prerequisites menu shows in order all the steps that you must complete before you can move on to setting up your Docker stack with or without Deployer. I say with or without Deployer because all options in this menu are free for anyone to use without registration. Just download the app from GitHub and run it. All these steps in the prerequisites menu automate many of the steps that I describe in my Docker and traffic guides. First, you accept the disclaimer. I want to pause here for a little bit and emphasize that Deployer is not a replacement for learning. In fact, using Deployer without understanding the basics of Linux and Docker can have consequences. So don't skip the learning part. Okay, then you provide some basic information. You can specify if you want to do a local only setup or a hybrid setup, which is a mix of local apps and apps exposed to the internet. Then you can set up your Docker environment in just a few seconds. Deployer automatically installs Docker, all the required files, folders, etc. as described in my guides, which are based on seven years of experience and evolution. There are many ways to set up your Docker home lab. So if you're starting out, this is a great way to get a jump start. Next, you can check your system for Docker server readiness. And if you're using your own domain name, you can even check things like port forwarding, firewall, Cloudflare settings are done correctly before you start setting up reverse proxy. So all of these steps are free for anyone to use in conjunction with my written guides. And if you run into issues, Deployer will give you some meaningful messages 
based on known mistakes and scenarios to help you figure out where the problem might be. Once you meet all the requirements, you can start configuring your system. For example, if you have remote mounts like a NAS, Deployer can install Arclone and set up SMB shares automatically and mount them for you. Then you set your folders like Downloads folder, Media folder, Books folder, Nextcloud folder, and so on. Then automatically check and add Graphics node to enable hardware transcoding in Plex and Jellyfin. Automatically enable the network node if you plan to set up a VPN server like WireGuard or install VPN clients like Gluten, both of which can deployer do for you automatically. You can even set up my Docker bash aliases that simplify Linux Docker and Docker Compose commands. If you have followed my guides and videos, I've probably mentioned this 100 times. Then in the Docker menu, you can set up socket proxy which is a nice safety feature to protect your docker socket from compromised apps or docker images deployer dashboard is a very nice addition to version 5 of deployer i'm really excited about it i spent over 100 hours trying to get this to work perfectly i hope you like it too because it's great to have an automatic tool to install all the apps you want but if you do not know which ports the apps are listening in then it becomes a mess this is where home lab dashboards come in handy in fact deployer can install homepage dashi flame and home are for you but you still have to manually populate them well not with deployer dashboard it is based on home page and it automatically adds and removes apps from your dashboard as your setup changes it gives you the url to access locally or if the app is exposed using a reverse proxy then you will also find the remote url and if you want to see some container metrics that is available to you as well and several useful links at the bottom. I'm really excited about the deployer dashboard. I hope you guys like it too. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Finally, in the Docker menu, you can see the disk usage and as Docker images start filling up your disk, which will happen as you start tinkering, you can quickly and safely clean up unwanted stuff using the cleanup feature. Another big change introduced in version 5 is that at this point, after you have Docker installed and socket proxy running, you can skip traffic and authentication, go straight to installing your apps if all you want is a local only setup. But if you like a reverse proxy, right now traffic is the only supported reverse proxy. It has a, a bit of a learning curve, but once you figure it out, in my opinion, traffic is the most dynamic and powerful reverse proxy. Many people struggle with traffic and that's why I created a beginner's video, an hour long video on traffic. Check it out if you're interested, but Deployer automates most of those steps. In the reverse proxy menu, you can configure the exposure mode for apps and choose simple, which was the default in all previous versions of Deployer until I came across this awesome video from Jim at Jim's Garage. In version 5, I'm introducing the advanced mode and now you can choose whether you want the app to be accessible internally from your LAN only or be externally available over the internet using fully qualified domain name. Then you can prepare your system, automatically create all files and folders and permissions required for traffic, then move on to staging traffic to ensure that it works as it should, and then finally auto switch to production to get the real Let's Encrypt certificate. At this point, unfortunately, Deployer only works with Cloudflare as the DNS provider. You can buy your domain from any registrar that you want, but as long as you use Cloudflare as your DNS provider, you can use Deployer to set up traffic. In future, I hope to support more providers. I also plan to add other reverse proxies such as Nginx reverse proxy and Caddy. Once traffic is running, at any point, you can change the exposure of apps using the Manage Exposure option or even put any web app behind traffic using the Trafficify option as described in my previous videos, but with little to no effort. 
This is very handy if you have multiple Docker hosts and you want to have only one traffic instance and put the apps from other Docker hosts behind traffic. This was not possible before version 5, but in version 5 we have local mode so you can have as many Docker hosts as you want and just one traffic instance. But if you have multiple domains, then no problem. Deployer has a domain pass through option to set up passing a domain through to another reverse proxy instance on another host, just like I explained in my written guide. If something goes wrong along the way, Deployer will error out and tell you what might be causing the issue. But if all goes well, you should have a beautiful traffic dashboard with basic HTTP authentication. But basic HTTP authentication is not very secure and this is where the security and authentication menu comes in. Deployer automates setting up Authelia and Google OAuth for you. Many of you have asked for authentic support. I am working on it. It's a bit complex, but I will get there eventually. If you want to change your authentication mode for your apps at any point, you can do so easily using the manage authentication option. Now that you have a strong foundation, either with or without traffic and authentication like Authelia, if you're going for local support, you can now go crazy and install all the apps that you want to have in your setup. There are databases, front ends for them, media apps like Plex and Jellyfins, Tor apps like Sonar, Radar, etc., monitoring apps, admin tools, smart home apps, dashboards, and many more. If you want to install an app, just select it and if some information is needed from you, you will be asked for it and Deployer will take care of the rest and give you some closing messages on how to access the app, including the default username and password that an app may have. So be sure to read those closing messages. I know some of you guys don't like to do that. Some apps may need minor tweaking before they can start working, for example, permissions issues or a minor configuration change to make them work behind a reverse proxy. Deployer takes care of these things automatically. And of course, as mentioned previously, if the app is installed successfully, it will be automatically added to Deployer dashboard. I keep adding more and more apps, so check the Deployer GitHub page for a full list of supported apps, but as I have said, you have full control over all the files and folders that Deployer creates. And if you have followed my guides, then you can even add apps that are not supported by Deployer. In fact, I will cover this topic in detail in my upcoming detailed video guide on Deployer version 5. So check that out. If you would like me to add support for certain apps, let me know in the comment section or join our Discord server and let me know there. As you can see, the apps menu also shows you a quick overview of whether an app is running or not. If it is running, is it local or is it exposed to the internet? And if it is exposed to the internet, what authentication layer is it using, etc. It will also highlight in red those that are not behind a good authentication layer to warn you. Once you've installed all the apps that you want, then you're ready to start managing your stack and this is where the tools menu comes in. In the stack manager, you will find all the options to manage your stack like upping your stack, downing your stack, recreating containers, checking status of containers, checking status of services as to whether they are enabled or disabled. You can even disable an app without having to remove it. And of course, you can enable it back later on. If for some reason something goes wrong, you can either safe delete or full delete an app. In safe delete, the app data is preserved. In full delete, the app and its settings, everything is removed and you can start over. If all looks good, then this would be a good time to create a backup of your setup. In fact, I strongly recommend that you take a backup as you progress through various steps in Deployer. Because if something goes wrong, you can just restore the backup and redo the step that was messed up. And if you want to move your whole stack to a new system, then there is a migration package option that will create a package that you can restore on a new system and be back in business in minutes. There are some other tools like fixing permissions. You will see a warning if some of the permissions are not correct. You can quickly fix them using this option. 
Then there is the settings menu that allows you to control how Deployer works. Turn on and off annoying messages on the menus, toggle Deployer mode from normal to expert and vice versa. Expert mode is very useful if you know what you're doing and would like to override some of the steps or checks that might fail. You can generate a sanitized log with all the sensitive information redacted so you can use it while you request support online. There are also few other options like refreshing deployer to remove the cache, resetting deployer to remove all the settings and configuration, and finally fully remove deployer. Note that these options do not affect your Docker stack in any way. They only apply to deployer itself. Finally, in the about menu, you will see some recommended steps to follow depending on what you want to set up. Then for paid supporters, you can verify your license. You will have to create a six digit pin to protect your account. Many of you have reached out to me on my Discord server when you forgot your pin. I've tried to make it easy for you guys in version five. There is now a pin reset option. Then there is an explanation for various license types and what they can do change log, which will print a list of all the changes to deployer. You will find this on my GitHub page too. And lastly, where to get support in case you need some help, which is my Discord server. If you like or don't like how deployer works, you can even submit a feedback right from the main menu. Before I finish, one final point. There are several license types, as you can see. The free option makes all the prerequisite menu items available to you for free without registration. So anybody can just download the app and use it. There is a basic license for anyone that wants to set up a local only Docker stack where the apps are available using the Docker host IP and port number. Of course, Deployer dashboard can make it easy for you to remember the port numbers. There is a plus option for anyone that wants to make the app available over the internet using a fully qualified domain name, Let's Encrypt SSL certificates and reverse proxy. And finally, there is a pro option for those who want to add Authelia, Google OAuth, etc. I hope to add CrowdSec and Authentic in future you will find a detailed comparison on my website on the deployer product page. I know that paid options may not work for some people, but as I have said in many of my videos and state of the site article, after 13 years of nonstop blogging about home lab topics, I've decided to introduce memberships because traffic to the site was tanking and consequently the ad revenue as well. In fact, I lost 75% more traffic since that article was published in 2023. As you can see, this is not sustainable. So memberships and deployer are how I finance my blog and videos. But don't worry, deployer, although awesome, it is not a black box or some magic. It does exactly what my articles and GitHub describe. So feel free to follow those instead. There are many free ways to support what I do, including subscribing to my channel, liking this video, or telling a friend about what I do. That is a nice segue to what I mentioned before, promotions. To celebrate the one year anniversary of Deployer and the launch of version five, from now till the end of November, I would randomly pick two subscribers who comment below and give them free licenses. So subscribe to my channel and comment below to get in on the giveaway. Likewise, if you decide to support my work by purchasing a deployer license, be sure to use this code to not only get a 15% off, but I will pick a random winner each month and refund the order so they can get it for free. Check the pinned comment below in the comment section for details and winner announcements. That was it everyone, a very quick overview of what Deployer is and how it works. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you feel like supporting my work, check out Deployer and purchase it. And if you do purchase it, I sincerely appreciate your support of my work. Be sure to watch the full video guide on Deployer version five to take advantage of all of its features. Once again, everything that Deployer does can be done using my guides as well. And if you struggle, I have an awesome, very active Discord community that can help you out. Shout out to the community, shout out to the active members and shout out to all the supporters. 
That's it for today. Take it easy, Geek Army. I will see you in my next video. Thank you.